Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin Shields. I'm the Chief Wealth Advisor at Boucher Finance Group, and I'm going to be one of your presenters today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, if the goal of today's presentation, uh, I think all of us, if we have the opportunity, we would like to retire a few years earlier than, let's say, the average age, age of 65. And so whether that's at the age of 30, which would be on the early side, or maybe age 55, the one thing I can tell you is that it's not going to happen without a lot of planning and being focused on executing uh, that plan. So today, uh, our goal is to walk you through what you need to do to get yourself there. So as I said, I'll be one of the presenters, but along with me is my colleague, Sam Macy. Uh, she's one of the wealth advisors here at the firm, and she's also a CFP. And just to kind of highlight what we'll be discussing, First, what is this? What does early retirement look like? There are a lot of different ways and flavors to have this set up. So, what does that look like? Uh, when is it a good fit? I mean, it, it is important to, to understand that to get to early retirement requires some discipline. So, in some cases, it, it is going to work for individuals. In other cases, uh, it's not. And then we'll talk about some strategies to get to financial independence. What are the best ways from budgeting and investing to get you there? And then with anything, when it comes to finances, there are some risks. So we'll talk about those risks and how to mitigate those risks. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to Sam now to take over. Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Macy, one of the Wealth Advisors, as Marty was saying. And it's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. And I'm very excited about this topic. And we are going to be starting off by talking about what does early retirement look like and when is it a good fit? And when I think about planning for early retirement, I think it's such an interesting concept because it is completely situational on an individual specific goals, values, and what makes sense for their financial picture. So if you took a moment to picture what early retirement would look like for you, I'm sure it would be completely different than what I picture or Marty or your neighbor. And I think that's so interesting to think about. And it really shows us that it's not one size fits all. So I wanted to begin by discussing what early retirement can look like and how to find that early financial independence. And I think traditionally, when people talk about early retirement, they're talking about working and then retiring. But there really are so many different variations of this. And so we are going to talk about some different ways that people can achieve early retirement. And we've broken out a few different variations for you here today. So I'm going to start by talking about what we're calling lean financial independence. And this strategy is for people that are minimalists who plan to achieve financial independence by living a frugal lifestyle both before and during retirement. And this might sound familiar to some people because it's very similar to the FIRE movement that's going on. FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And this is a movement that really focuses on extreme saving and investing in people that are retiring decades early, but it comes at a cost. It comes at the cost of living a very frugal lifestyle, like I was saying, and having that frugal lifestyle in retirement. So when I think about my future retirement, and when we talk to clients about what makes sense for them in the future, oftentimes this strategy is not the most attractive. And that is simply because as they are picturing what retirement would look like in the future for them, it's, it's not living that frugal lifestyle. It's saving now to be able to have the financial freedom in the future to do some of the things that they don't have time to do right now. Maybe it's traveling more, spending more time with family and taking them on trips or buying that boat, whatever it is, they are looking to have that financial freedom in the future more often than not. So let's talk about the next strategy that we have for you. And we're calling this one light financial independence. So this one is for individuals that are looking to retire a few years earlier. So we're saying that's retiring five to 10 years earlier. And to accomplish this, it requires saving above the general recommendation of 10 to 15% of your gross income. 
So in order to retire early, you have to save more above the general recommendation. And the more that you can save, the earlier you should be able to retire. And that's something that we, as your advisor, can work with you on to help you understand what's feasible for you and how much you truly need to save to reach the timeline that you are shooting for. There also is this hybrid idea of early retirement. And I will say we see this a lot actually when we are helping clients plan for their future. This hybrid strategy is for individuals focused on saving more now to work less later. And their goal is to partially retire at an early age, but continue to work in maybe a less demanding job or part-time work at their current employment. And when I think about some of the examples of conversations I've had with clients about situations like this, it's talking to people like doctors or nurses who really enjoy that relationship they have with the people that they're working with and helping people in the way that they do, but they're ready to scale back. And so it's this transition of from working full time to working less and then eventually fully retiring, but it helps ease them into it while also giving them some um, income during that time that allows them to also supplement the funds that they need to live off during that transition period. So it can be a great strategy for people that are looking for a more hybrid approach to early retirement. And then finally, we have people that are going for the full financial independence route. And these people are focused on earning and saving as much as possible to retire early and afford the same comfortable lifestyle. So these people are doing kind of what we more traditionally think of, perhaps, of working really hard, saving as much as possible, and retiring, fully retiring at an earlier date, but being able to do those things that they've been saving towards. So now that I've talked about the different strategies that you know we've seen of people working towards early retirement, we're going to talk about who is a good fit. And we've come up with an early retiree profile of sorts. And so I wanna start off by talking about people that are good fit for early retirement have a very strong desire to retire early and have strong motivators behind that because it's not an easy thing. It's something that you really do have to commit to if you're going to achieve early retirement. So some examples of motivators that people have to reach this goal is that they're in a challenging or maybe an unfulfilling career. It's something that you know, they're, they're fine with doing for now, they're going to earn that money and save, but they would perhaps like to exit that career earlier than the average person. Maybe they have something else that they plan on doing, but that's something that is a strong motivator for them. Another motivator could be you had a significant financial life experience or a crisis of some kind. Maybe that's how you grew up, or maybe that's some sort of financial crisis you experienced as a mid-career professional and it's something that you never want to feel again. And so in order to take control of your situation, you want to completely take control of that retirement timeline and also how much you're saving so that you can retire when you want to. Maybe you also just have hobbies or a passion project that you're really looking forward to getting to. And retiring early is the perfect way to get to that goal. But then we also have people that have known health issues. Maybe they have a diagnosis now, or there's a family history of health issues, and we know that that is a real possibility for them in the future. So working towards early retirement gives them some of those early years where they feel like they'll be able to truly enjoy their retirement before maybe they have to deal with some of these issues. And lastly, we actually have a lot of these conversations with clients where they have an expectation of being a future caregiver to their parents or family members. And so they would like to pursue early retirement to maybe have some years before they have that responsibility. And also they feel that they might financially need to support these people. And so they want to also save more into their portfolio in order to be able to financially support them if that day comes. In addition to that, to be an early retiree requires some other characteristics. So the first one I wanna talk about is having a strong work ethic and also being a diligent saver. You need to be able to earn that income to be able to save and to be saving into it 
diligently over time. This also goes hand in hand with being a good budgeter. If you fully understand your cash flow, you'll be able to understand what you can save, what is feasible for you to save in order to achieve that earlier timeline. And then also it's, it's a good characteristic for someone to be able to start early enough to take advantage of the compound interest in their investments. I'm not saying if you don't start young, it's impossible to retire early. That's certainly not the case. But if you do start later in life, maybe you are mid-career, you might have to save more. And actually, you probably will have to save more than if you had started earlier in your career to get that compound interest. So let time be on your side and start thinking about it now. It's also very important to be on the same page with your spouse or your partner. If your spouse would rather spend the money that you have currently coming in on traveling or purchasing a new vehicle or other things that come up, instead of focusing or prioritizing saving extra to retire early, you might have conflict there. So it's something to discuss and make sure you're on the same page. Additionally, you need to make sure that you have relationships and a community that support this lifestyle of early retirement. Have conversations with your friends, with your family, to see if they're also considering early retirement or if they will have flexibility to you know, be part of your life as you enter that early stage of retirement at that point. Also, does your community have opportunities for you to be, you know, um, giving back in the community, being involved so that you will have some fulfillment in that area as well. So these are all just good characteristics to keep in mind to see if you are a good fit as you think about early retirement and what that can mean for you. So next, I'm going to dive into some strategies to achieve early financial independence. So how does it work, right? We've talked about the different um, strategies towards what early retirement can mean, who's a good fit, but what are the first steps? How do we start taking those steps towards early retirement? And I would say the two most important pieces that you need to determine first are the timeline that you would like and how much you need to save. And that's where working with us, your financial planner, can really be an advantage for you because it does take some careful consideration as you account for all of your future expenses, one-off goals, even inflation, other sources of income other than your portfolio like social security, pensions, part-time work. All of these are important variables in determining how much you need to save for in the future. And it can be challenging as you think 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40 years down the road. So let us help you navigate those topics and conversations to help you be in the right place as you plan for early retirement. Now, some people will do a rough calculation though, just to have some sort of starting point. And they'll start with this rule called the rule of 25. And what this rule says is that you should have saved 25 times your planned annual expenses by the time you retire. There's also the 4% distribution rule. And as clients of ours, I'm sure you've had conversations with your advisor about what this rule is. But just as a reminder, what it does is represent a safe annual withdrawal rate for a portfolio to have a very low probability of running out of money during a 30-year retirement. So again, just great starting points to get the gears turning on how much you need to save by the time you retire. And once you've determined that, Let's begin budgeting and dramatically reducing expenses. You need to be able to prioritize saving at this point in time. Seek ways to increase your income. Maybe that's a second job or part-time work or a side hustle of sorts, but any way you can generate some extra income will be greatly helpful for you saving into your portfolio for early retirement. You wanna save dramatically and invest aggressively. Overall, you're looking to save about 30% or more of your gross income. For some people, this might be 50%. It really depends on the type of early retirement you are striving for and what your goals are. How early do you want to retire and how much do you need to save for your lifestyle and budget in the future? When it comes to investing, you want to have a diversified portfolio that is mostly stock. 
We know over the long term, the stock market always goes up, and that is the asset class where you, you are going to get the most return on your investment. And lastly, again, think about the purpose of your life at that point when you ha have reached financial independence, when you have reached early retirement. What do you want to be doing with your time? What is going to fulfill your life? And make sure you have something in mind so that you don't get there and think, great, but now what do I do? All right, so now let's talk about some ways to save most effectively. I'm first going to say that you should be focusing on maxing out your employer retirement plan contributions. Set up automatic contributions to your 401k or 403b, whatever your plan is, and be aggressively invested. We are here to help. So if you need advice on how to be invested within that plan, please involve us. We will help you select the right funds in your employer plan to make sure that you are, are invested correctly for the long term. If you are 50 or older, you can make additional catch-up contributions to these types of accounts as well. In addition to your employer plan, contributing to a Roth IRA, if you're eligible, is another great type of account. You can also contribute to a taxable account. This becomes extremely important for flexibility in early retirement years if you are planning to retire before 59 and a half, because before then, you cannot access your retirement funds without a penalty incurring. So be mindful of that. Think about what age do I want to retire? How many years is that until 59 and a half? And set aside the appropriate amount of funds in a taxable account for you to access during those years. You should also start maxing out your health savings account contributions, also called an HSA, for future use. And this is particularly helpful during the years you do not have employer health insurance coverage, but you're too young for Medicare. What HSAs do is a triple tax advantage for you. So they will give you tax deductible contributions into the HSA account, tax deferred earnings on those funds, and tax free distributions for qualified medical expenses. So a really great tool to have at your disposal during the years that you might be on private insurance, paying premiums and having other medical expenses. You should also take advantage of deferred comp and any other employee stock purchase plans or employee benefits you have available to you to build your wealth. And lastly, utilize our expertise. Work with an investment and financial planning fiduciary. We are here to help you prioritize which accounts to save into and to figure out how much you should be saving into it to achieve your goals. So now I'm going to hand it over to Marty, who's going to be talking about how do you effectively manage budgeting to be successful? Thank you, Sam. We always give guidance to clients that having a budget, even at a high level, can be very beneficial. But if you're going to try to retire early, the budgeting process is so much more important. In particular, you really have to be looking at the detail of that budget. Make sure you're really tracking and you're knowing what your expenses are and that you're sticking to that budget. It is so important to be disciplined on a monthly, quarterly, and annual basis that that discipline will allow you to be successful. But as in anything in life, and part of this is being able to be successful and doing it year in, year out. So there's an element of having some element of flexibility. Uh, you know, as I'll talk about, it, it is a destination point to get you to retirement, but you have to enjoy the ride there because it could be talking about multiple decades of living a little bit below your means to be successful in this. So you have to give a little bit of flexibility, understand what's going to work for you and your partner, your spouse, and your family. But having that detailed budget uh, is going to be important. One of the elements that we always recommend to people is to have an emergency reserve fund. This is simply a fund that you keep in cash. Uh, it can be in a savings account connected to your checking account. You keep between three to six months worth of cash flow in that account. You can keep it right in cash or in CDs that are in a ladder. And the goal behind that account is if you have something that's unexpected, a major car repair, healthcare bill, a home repair, you can go to that money and utilize it to cover that expense. And then over the next three to six to nine months, uh, go ahead and replenish that emergency reserve fund. That is extremely important. It allows you to uh, be more successful with your budgeting. It allows you to remove some of the stress that can exist with these unknown expenses. So really would encourage you to have that set up. 
The other element, and this this is important, is especially as you're younger, to perhaps have a a second job or even a third job or a side hustle, maybe it's real estate, where you have additional income coming in. Having that additional income can make it that much easier to be saving. And the other thing to remember is if you're working 40 hours a week in your day job, and then on evenings and weekends, you're also doing a second job, whatever that may be, in those hours, not only are you earning money, but you're not spending money, right? So it's almost twofold the value of that additional job. So really something to consider, and this is where we talk about the sacrifices you'll need to make if you wanna be successful in this endeavor, uh, is this idea of of working more than one job. Really, you wanna also try to eliminate all debt. Uh, In general, it says when you're talking about high interest rate debt, particularly credit card debt, or even debt from uh, colleges and universities, Having that high interest rate debt can be very detrimental to being successful. Uh, In particular, if you're using a lot of credit cards, it's easy to rack up expenses where you may be going above your budget and don't have the cash flow to pay that off. So really having that mindset to eliminate and reduce the debt is going to be very valuable. Now, there can be times, let's say you're able to buy a car at an extremely low interest rate. And I would say that interest rate should be below 4% or under 3% before you want to consider this. But if you're at a rate that's below on that level, now you're looking at, hey, do I take cash where I can uh, have it invested in the market or even at this point, uh, a CD and earn 4 or 5% or if it's in the market, a higher rate of return or, and, or should I pay off that? that debt that's at an interest rate of two, three, or 4%. So again, if you can find opportunities where you're buying a car or a mortgage to have a debt that's that low, you can take that approach. But in general, having the mindset that you're not going to accumulate a lot of debt is going to be beneficial. And I think this next bullet is extremely important. Going down this path of retiring early and trying to save a lot should not mean that you're sitting on the couch, that you're doing nothing, right? You have to find that lifestyle that basically allows you to engage in activities that don't cost a lot of money. And as Sam mentioned, having a community, whether uh, it's with, through your family or others within the community that embrace that lifestyle, where you can have a lot of activities that are free. And there's a lot of activities out there that are free. I think, unfortunately, we get in this mindset in the US that uh, happiness is connected to being a consumer and spending money. So it does require shifting your mindset. It does require having a community that supports that that lifestyle. But again, it should be an active lifestyle that at the end of the day makes you happy because this, as I mentioned, it's about the journey. So one of the important elements of uh, retiring early is the cash flow. How are you going to provide that cash flow? Well, Sam mentioned you know, at some point it can be from your IRAs, but in general, you're not going to be able to take distributions from your IRA be, IRAs before age 59 and a half. So really having that money in a taxable brokerage account is going to be become important. So as you save, you have to be looking, as Sam mentioned, how many dollars are you putting into a taxable account that you can utilize before age 59 and a half? Uh, as Sam also mentioned, this concept of having some part-time income Uh, while retired can be very beneficial. Maybe this income is now in a job that you really are passionate about, but you're working and you're doing it in a way that fits your schedule. Um, Passive income from things such as real estate. So again, this is the idea that building an element of a real estate portfolio or some other passive income that you can utilize when you're uh, in financial independence and that provides the cash flow to meet your expenses. This is another great approach. Pensions can be a possibility. We have many individuals that are retired early. They worked uh, maybe as prison guards. They worked in law enforcement, firefighters. Usually those types of pensions, you can start at an early age. There are some other pensions that you can start at age 55, but many of them to be successful, you're having to delay into age 60 or 65. There are two uh, ways to distribute retirement accounts Before age 59 and a half, I'll go into those in the next slide. One of them is called a 72T distribution that allows you to take monies out of an IRA before age 59 and a half without a penalty. The other is the rule of 55, which allows you to take those monies out of a 401k or 403b without a penalty. And then finally, uh, to consider a longevity annuity. And really what this is about is This is an annuity that kicks in at, let's say, age 75 or 80, 
and that you can look at your expenses and say, hey, between Social Security and this longevity annuity, I'm going to be able to try to cover all my later retirement expenses with those elements. And what that does is it frees you up to say, hey, between now and then, I can almost spend my assets down to zero. All right. And that's there's an element of freedom that it gives you that says, hey, I'm going to make sure that I'm protected on the backside with this annuity and with Social Security. And that between now and then, I'll use my assets uh, to cover my expenses. So real quickly, the rule of 72 T distributions, uh, it allows you to take money out of IRAs before 59 and a half without a 10% penalty. What has to happen, you have to have uh, substantial equal payments. Uh, it can be monthly or annually, but it has to be at least be annually uh, out of your IRAs. There are three different approaches and equations that are provided by the IRS. I'm not gonna go into those now. They're a little bit complex, but uh, those three approaches determine how much you can take or have to take. And then finally, you have to take those distributions for at least five years or to in turn 59 and a half. So if you started this at age 47, you have to take those substantial equal distributions from 47 to age 59 and a half. So it's a long period of time, and that's where you have to really know the mechanics of how you're gonna do this out of your IRA to be successful. The other approach is called the rule of 55, which allows you to take money out of a 401k 43B plan without paying the 10% penalty. The big element with this is you, one, your plan has to allow for it, most plans do, but you have to take it out of the plan that you uh, left that plan after age 55. So if you leave an employer at age 53, your monies are still in that 401k plan at age 57, and you wanted to take them, that would not work. You have to be working at that company and contributing to that plan to after age 55. And then finally, when you're taking uh, those monies out, you have to uh, keep the money in the plan. You can't be moving it to an IRA, but there is no uh, requirement for how long you do this. You can start and stop it at any point. So let's talk about the risk because anything in life, you have to understand what the opportunities are, but what the risks are as well. So one is longevity, right? So let's say you retire at 40 and you have good health and you have longevity in your genes. You could be living to age 95. So you're talking about 55 years of cash flow needs and 55 years of being retired. So I do think you have to take that in consideration of how long you'll be retired, both covering expenses and as we talked about, what are you going to be doing for those years? Uh, healthcare expenses, both while you're trying to save and while you're in retirement. Because the big element with this is, if you're not working, where are you going to get your uh, health insurance from? Uh, Medicare does not kick in until age 65. Now, there could be situations, depending on how your income is, that you could be eligible for Medicaid. But that is only, obviously, for lower income individuals. So you need to be making sure that your plan includes covering those uh, healthcare insurance expenses and healthcare expenses that might have been covered through your work beforehand. Uh, I think you have to appreciate that you're gonna be giving up on potentially some social security benefits. So if you were to be working in a high income job until age 62, and then at some point taking social security, you'll have all those higher income years of earnings to boost up your social security. If you only work 10 years, you're gonna have enough full quarters to get the full benefit of your social security. And if you stop 10 or 15 years before uh, age 67, let's say, it's gonna limit what your overall social security benefit could be. The other thing is this is gonna uh, you know, be required to have a reasonable market performance. So if you wanna retire in 10 years, you've got a decent amount of money, but the markets uh, perform poorly, let's say like the, you know, the years 2000s from 2000 to, uh, 2010, where the market was mostly flat during that time period, it's going to be challenging to do this because you're not going to get the types of returns on your portfolio that you need in order to be successful. High inflation can be a problem. If inflation is very high, uh, down the road, you're going to need more uh, dollars in your accounts and higher cash flow to cover those expenses. Uh, cost of your lifestyle in your 20s and 30s, right? So this is where you're young, you're out there with your friends, you're doing things, to then at the same time, try to be frugal enough to save uh, at a level, as Sam mentioned, to have that compounding interest to be successful to retire early, it can be challenging. And this is where it's that balancing act between wanting to retire early, but living your life now and doing the things you want to do now, but still being able to save the dollars that you need to be able to save. 
Uh, kids, right? So that's the challenging one. I have three teenagers. Uh, kids are expensive, period. Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot do this approach uh, and retire early with having kids. It's about having that lifestyle with them and having them appreciate that they're going to be doing things perhaps different than their friends and them buying into it. Now, that could be easier said than done, but uh, we do know families that take this approach and they can be very successful with it. Uh, having a mortgage or certainly um, improvements to your home. So these are things, big one-time expenses that can come up. Uh, and you have to make sure that if you have a mortgage, that it's affordable. So, you know, you have to be, when you talk about budgeting, this is something you have to be aware of. In particular, as that house ages, you're going to have to put money back into it to uh, keep it up. And those are dollars that you need to budget for. Finally, social risk. As I mentioned, you know, in your 20s or 30s, are you going to be missing out on real big uh, life uh, opportunities, whether it's traveling or different things with your friends and family because you're trying to do this? And then finally, when you are retired, if you retire and you're 45, are, are your friends and family going to be retired? Uh, are, at some point, after, let's say, five, 10 years of playing pickleball or playing golf or do whatever it is that you think you want to be doing, are you saying, hey, this is not fulfilling? Uh, you know, this is where it may go, hey, is it about retiring earlier or is it about having the right career uh, that's most important to you? So just to wrap things up, some a summary of what we discussed and some closing thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, to be successful, you need to have a plan. You cannot wing it. You need to have a plan, stick to it. And as Sam mentioned, this is where we're quite often very helpful with our clients in making sure that they, they know what that plan is and that we're kind of their financial counselor to get them to be successful with that plan. Um, Make sure that the timeline fits your desire. As Sam also mentioned, there's every different flavor of this that you can imagine. And so your, your plan is going to be unique to you. It's not one size fits all. And that plan may evolve over time as well. Um, you know, you got to be saving aggressively. Even if you're younger, you have to at least be saving 15 to 20 percent. As you get older, that number goes up. You know, we've heard stories of and seen situations where people are in their mid 40s, they have a financial crisis, they change their mindset on how they're living, and they start saving 50% of their income going forward. And within 10 plus years, they're well on their way to retiring. And it's just a complete life change. Uh, but you have to really you know, save aggressively. And you have to be invested aggressively as well. It's got to be a well-designed plan. You can't be you know, just taking your chances and buying penny stock that you have to, you hope it goes up over time. A well-designed plan that has a uh, large allocation of equities is going to be important. Um, thinking about what your plan is when you get to uh, retirement, right? That is also very important. And that's, this could be the fun part, right? It can evolve over time and constantly changes to what you're doing, but you can't just say, hey, I think I'm going to sit on the couch. For most people, that won't work. Mentally, they won't be in a good spot. I talked about the importance of cash flow. Understand what that cash flow looks like because we're going to be looking at that cash flow for an extended period of time. So even people who retire at 65, we're talking about cash flow for 30 years. If you retire early, now you're talking about cash flow for 40 or 50 years, and there could be more variables that could impact that cash flow. So it's that much more important that your, your plan is airtight. And then finally, and this is a really important stress this is, enjoy the ride. You have to be able to sustain this. This is your life. You don't want to be miserable as you're trying to get to this point or have it be a lot of stress. Make sure if this is something you want to do, that you're going to be able to live that lifestyle, that you're still happy with your life and that you're not just focused on the destination, uh, which is early retirement. Well, folks, thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, it's great to hear, uh, be here to present. Uh, thank you, Sam, for joining me on this. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, this is something, again, we work with many clients on to make sure they're successful. So hopefully you enjoy the content today.